So when I recently got this 650Ti boost in for $70, I thought, wow, what a bargain. And upon putting it into my computer, although it worked, the temperatures were a little bit high. So upon taking off the cooler, I noticed how rough the uh, heat sink, the base plate was. So I decided to do a little guide on lapping and changing thermal paste and note the differences for you guys and let you know what the best options are. So recently I decided to build a workstation PC for work. I mean, who would have ever thought, right? A workstation PC for work. But anyway, I decided to put in a 650 Ti Boost in there, which I got for $70. Now at this price, honestly, it's pretty damn good value for money considering uh, it boosts, I mean, it boasts about the same performance as a 750 Ti, though using a little bit more power. Uh, though when I put it in, I noticed that the temperatures were a little bit high. So I immediately pulled it out, started cleaning it down, and I found that the heatsink paste they put on this was junk. Also, upon putting my fingernail and uh, running it across the heatsink, I noticed that it was really rough. It had a lot of grooves in it. So I decided not only to change the heatsink paste and document the uh, actual um, temperature change with just the heatsink paste alone, I decided to lap the cooler as well and document uh, the temperature change with that as well. So let's get on to some results now. So in conclusion, what can I say about the whole thing that just happened here? Well, the thermal paste made the biggest difference. As we saw with the Arctic Silver 5, this stuff got us a five degree drop um, over the uh, stock heatsink paste when we tested that. Uh, the Enamax did pretty well as well. That got a four, a three, three degree drop. Though the Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro I thought was slightly behind the Enamax paste. And it was a little bit behind the Arctic Silver 5. And this surprised me because I read on the internet that this stuff was really good. Like this was the best if you're putting it on a GPU die. I don't know where I read that, but um, this stuff didn't do the best. I mean, it did better than the stock thermal heatsink paste, but it didn't do the best. And especially since it costs the most here out of these contenders, I thought it would have done the best. And also considering that Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro is really good on dyes. Uh, so I was surprised to see that this didn't do so well. Uh, last but not least, um, or should I say last but least, the silicon grease. This stuff did terrible on a GPU die. So don't use this stuff on dies. I think that's something to come out of this video. Uh, even though I've been a bit of a fan of this stuff, just using it on normal heat sinks, but it did terrible uh, for what it's worth on a die. Uh, and last, uh, lastly, the lapping itself. You guys probably saw the results. Uh, didn't do too well. Like I was surprised. I thought we would have got a bigger drop out of lapping a... Um, cooler like this, especially one which I thought was sort of a worst case scenario where the grooves were really rough and you could see with my fingernail I etched it on there and then after I smoothed it down it was really smooth where I um, sanded it back. So I was kind of surprised to see that the temperature drop was probably only half or one degree at best over just the um, stock rough heatsink. Uh, so I guess that's a compliment to the heatsink pace and how good they're getting and sort of how much of a slack they can take. 
so that's something to come out of this video. Yeah, heat sink paste. They make a big difference. So make sure you pick your heat sink paste carefully. I know a lot of guys are big fans of like um, uh, MX4. I'm a big fan of Arctic Silver 5 and I'm gonna keep being a big fan after this video. This stuff's pretty damn good. It's consistent anyway. Uh, keep in mind with lapping, I'm sure it would make a bigger difference though if we had a bigger heat sink on a bigger die. For instance, something like my old GDX 780 Lightning, which had like a one and a half kilogram cooler on it, and the die would have been a lot bigger than a 650 Ti Boost. Um, and I think it would make more of a difference in those kind of circumstances. So anyway, for what it's worth though, the average person on an average GPU would probably not need to go out and lap their CPU cooler. So I think lapping's one of those uh, things that f that's for more high performance, like real, the guy, trying to get the last grain out of his um, out of his uh, wheat or something like that. So anyway, <laughs> that's a bad analogy. So anyway, guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Uh, if you have any questions, yeah, drop a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you in another tech video very soon. Bye.